Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. While airplanes have been around for well over 100 years now, not many people think about the enormous amount of engineering that goes into the actual process of producing them. From the engines, the wings, to the landing gear mechanism, and the bolts that hold the seats in place, every piece of an aircraft requires perfect manufacturing precision. And while both manual and semi-automated assembly line construction has been essential to airplanes for decades, robots like Boeing's Fuselage Automated Upright Build, or FOB, are now taking over much of the process. The FOB robots work in pairs, tightening rivets and fusing seals using a variety of interchangeable tools. Later on in the perfectly segmented process, other robots also contribute their own automated specialties. During the advanced process carried out at Boeing's factory in Everett, Washington, some of the big parts are moved into place on automated guided vehicles, or AGVs, remotely controlled by mechanics. The process is so successful that many other aerospace firms like Northrop Grumman have also implemented automation into the manufacture of fighter jets like the F-35. Still, at Boeing, robots are also contributing to the painting process. In fact, the company's Washington facility recently opened a few special automated bays for painting wings faster and more accurately than ever before. Known as ASM, or the Automated Spray Method, these two robots are doing a job in just minutes that previously took a team of up to 45 man-hours to accomplish. While assembling state-of-the-art aircraft has always been a fascinating process, the addition of automation and robotics makes it appear almost hypnotic. The assembling of a Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner, for instance, A mid-sized twin-jet engine passenger plane, the 787-9 is 206 feet long and boasts a wingspan of about 197 feet. Its massive range and high-speed capabilities have made it a very popular plane with commercial airlines. It only takes about five weeks for the robots and workers to turn the millions of separate components and tiny parts into a completed Dreamliner airplane. And automation is the big reason. Before any airplane can leave the ground, however, its frame and components need to undergo rigorous testing. Do you energize hydraulic? Retest preparation. Over the years, this process has changed quite a bit becoming more and more sophisticated as technology improves. In Boeing's case, they have an ultra-modern fatigue testing plant that puts a new plane through over 100,000 simulated flight hours. In facilities like the Czech Aerospace Research Center in Prague, some of these fatigue tests take almost two years to complete. During this time, technicians simulate a stress load on the aircraft that is five times more than a plane can endure in a normal lifespan. Fatigue testing is all about extremely stressing the entire structure of the plane and making sure it can hold up over time.
The testing platform has more than 100 different devices that put stress on different parts of the plane. This simulates pressures it might encounter in the air or on the ground. In the factory, some of the more important components like the wing spars undergo their own strength testing. Again, automation plays a big part, with robots scanning the wing spar with ultrasonic waves to find any invisible flaws, structural damage, and air pockets. There is also a process known as static ground testing. This is when a plane's fuselage, wings, and other components are put under extreme pressure to ensure maximum integrity. In some cases, the wings can be bent nearly 90 degrees during the process. As complicated as the airplane assembling and testing process may be, assembling a massive ship is just as complicated, yet magnificent. Today, shipyards are equipped for what's known as modular construction. This is when the sections of the ship are fabricated separately, then placed atop a rail system or heavy lifting vehicles so they can be welded together. This is by far the most efficient way to put together a large vessel. After all, there are very few construction hangars capable of holding a modern full-size ship. This is especially true when you're dealing with one of the largest ship classes of all, cruise ships. These ships are assembled in a dry dock, so they never have to be moved from one place to another. When ready for launch, the dry dock is flooded and the ship simply floats away. Those vessels that are not constructed in dry docks are typically launched into the water for the first time at the christening ceremony. There are several ways to do this. The most common is known as the slide method. This is when the ship is placed on large skids or rollers that when set in motion allows the ship to slide down the ramp and right into the water. It's usually a pretty tense moment as the ships often appear as if they're about to capsize upon hitting the water. Another popular launching method is what's known as an airbag launch. This is very similar to the ancient log method of moving very heavy objects. It consists of using elongated, heavy-duty airbags placed under the ship. These are then inflated to bear the vessel up and later allow it to simply roll into the water. For cruise lines, the launching of a new ship is a major newsworthy event. But since these vessels are so massive, they can't simply leave the dry dock under their own power. Most shipyards are located on rivers, not on the ocean. Ships of this size simply cannot maneuver their way out to sea. That's why tugboats are employed. They tow and direct the ships downriver to the estuary. A process that can sometimes take days to complete. As the sheepdogs of the maritime industry, tugboats continue to play a very important role in guiding these gigantic vessels in and out of very tight and potentially catastrophic situations. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.